Okay, hello, welcome to the weather update. Wind very windy out there. You might hear the wind in the background occasionally here, get a few gusts coming in. Um, but uh, let's take a look. But the skies were really incredible. I have a whole video uh, tell you what it was like, to show you what it was like. It was pretty amazing. Uh, when I went out in the afternoon around 3 o'clock, we had some of this mematis clouds around, uh, which was interesting. And then uh, throughout the day, we just had more of these interesting clouds here. Uh, but uh, uh, really interesting. Uh, got some Virga around, uh, some really nice cumulus, uh, low-top cumulo form showers. Uh, and uh, just incredible, uh, incredible skies to look at. Uh, and uh, like I said, I have a whole video of it, but I'll just show you some of what I saw today in this weather update. But I have a whole video that will be coming a little later tonight. Um, again, look at that incredible uh, clouds uh, that we had here. Uh, some lenticular formations, too. There, that's pretty interesting right there. Um, and we've got one, a few more here. Look at that sunset there. Uh, and uh, just incredible uh, cloud formations there all throughout the day today. Uh, really just incredible. Uh, and that's a sign of the energy that's in the atmosphere. And we have some pretty strong wind gusts going on right now out there. We have some wind gusts reaching uh, 38 miles an hour at LaGuardia. Temperatures are dropping to the upper 50s. We've had some rain showers around. Uh, we're going to go and look at the radar, actually, which I haven't even put up here yet. Uh, this is the satellite image right now. Um, so you can see plenty of clouds around. We have another little piece of energy that's going to come down overnight that'll bring us another chance with some showers. Uh, let's get that radar on here right now, actually. Let's uh, go to the AccuWeather radar. and Because uh, we actually had some pretty intense... Now, we're under a wind, advi uh, we're under a wind advisory. So this is... Uh, these showers, actually. Um, we just got a little... We got a shower here around, I would say, 720. Uh, uh, but it, these, these actually got quite heavy as they moved away from us. Now they're starting to peter out again. Um, but uh, they were quite heavy. Uh, um, no lightning with it that I saw, but uh, uh, you'll see in the video, it was pretty impressive to see. Um, you know, getting back to these observations here, uh, dew points have dropped. You'll see dew points now dropped into the low 30s. The air is dry, but we have this steep uh, steep lapse rate, and that is why we're seeing uh, what we're seeing here with... Uh, uh, with these, uh, with these, a lot of this instability going on. Um, and so let's take a look, see how much uh, rainfall that uh, has fallen today. We'll go and we'll uh, look at the historical for the precipitation for the day and see. Uh, last, uh, you could see there's some there, but let's uh, move this up ahead to um, move this to one o'clock. All right, yeah. See, these showers haven't really dropped much. It's 0.02. I'm surprised that it's all that fell in that shower that hit us was 0.02. That doesn't seem right. That does not seem right. That was a pretty that was a pretty hefty shower we had there in the afternoon when I did when I had to make that weather update. That that definitely more than 0.02 fell in that. It it poured for a little bit there. So I don't know. This is not completely telling us the whole story. Um, we'll have to look at some, uh, we'll have to look at Wonderground and maybe get some more information from that as far as the rainfall goes because it came down in those showers. They were not light, light showers. They, they had some pretty, uh, gusty downpours here. I'm surprised that it wasn't that much because it really poured when that shower hit. I guess it goes just because it was so brief, but, uh, Wilson Park at .09, I, I thought for sure there would have been more. I thought for sure there would have been more. I guess not. I mean, it poured. I mean, anyone who got caught in that would have gotten soaked. So I'm kind of surprised that uh, these numbers are as low as they are across the island. I thought for sure they would have at least been a quarter of an inch in that. Kind of surprising, really, uh, considering how hard it rained. Uh, though maybe the wind made it seem like the rain was heavier than it actually was because the wind gusted quite a bit uh, in that. And... Uh, we're going to actually look at uh, the latest wind reports from the Weather Service right now and see uh, what the highest wind gusts were in our area here. Uh, some areas are reporting 54 mile an hour wind gusts at Jersey City, 52 at Robbins Reef. I'm looking at this, the really high numbers right now. Um, Nassau County Bayville had a 49 mile an hour wind gust. And Manhattan downtown had a 49 mile an hour wind gust. Most of these are in the morning. 55 miles an hour in Eaton's Neck. 55 at Stony Brook. 48 at West Hampton Airport. 
uh, Shinnecock, 45 miles an hour, 44 miles an hour at Farmingdale Airport. Um, I'd like to see if we have. Well, let's let's just look at some of the observations on here to so get an idea. Oh, we have we have no we have missing data. Okay, that's nice. It looks like all the observation sites went down for whatever reason. All the official observation sites. Uh, last report we had was at 1953 at Farmingdale, which was like uh, what, like about. That was a while ago already. Uh, 1953. That, should, that actually should be car fairly current. I think it's just the past hour that's been missing. Um, but other than that, uh, didn't manage. To, it got up into the 60s, you see here. But look at these wind gusts. Some strong wind gusts earlier on, though. But we still got that wind picking up quite a bit. We still have that high wind warning in effect for Jersey, too. So let's see what it's like in Jersey. No, that's not what I mean. Whoa, did you hear that? That's the wind blowing my blinds around. Uh, let's see. Yeah, gust of 40 at uh, Tom's River. They were gusting close to 50 earlier on today. So, yeah, quite a lot of wind today across the area. And that's why they're under that high wind warning. And we're in uh, under that again. We'll go, on to, go over that high wind warning again. That is in effect until 4 a.m., uh, and that is uh, winds 35 to uh, 25 to 35 miles an hour with gusts to 50 to 60. This is in much of New Jersey. Uh, for us, we've got the wind advisory in effect, and that's going to go until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. What Northwest winds 25 to 35 miles an hour with gusts up to 55 miles an hour with an isolated gust of 60 possible. Um, so, yeah, we got some pretty strong wind gusts out there. It's just kind of surprising the rain... Uh, aspect of it i really thought that there would be more it's a shame you can't do peak wind gusts on this thing um but we can what we can do is look at some of this the stations like this one here in carl place this is the closest one to miniola so at least we can show you because when that shower came through the winds were really gusty let's see if we can uh we go to the chart here uh the wind chart and you can see yep this was, let's see, what time was this? Yep. Well, let's see. There was a gust. It has it at 434. Shower really came through earlier, but there was a pretty strong wind gust over there at 32 miles an hour, a little after that shower passed through. Um, and you can see when that shower passed through, look at how the dew points dropped. Hmm, like that. And the temperatures dropped, too. You could see where the showers hit, where the temperatures dropped. So that's a very interesting weather day, all in all. Very interesting. Let's see if we can find another station here. Look at Williston Park. Let's see if we can also see that to where that shower came through. Because that, that shower was impressive. Let's see, and I know, yes, the month is almost over, so we're going to have to go over our... Very, still very windy out there. Very windy. You can see that dip again. That's where that's where it looked like there was a decent shower. This is where the shower occurred right here. We see that dip in the temperature. The temperature dropped like into the 50s when that shower hit, and then it rose back up again. Because the sun was out, we had like partly sunny skies, uh, and then that shower hit. And it was really impressive, that shower. I, I, I wish I would have been outside to actually experience it, because it was actually pretty impressive when that shower came on through. Um uh, uh, now how the temperature dropped again we'll just go back to Carl Place and I'll show you that again on here and this is the current condition here with the wind um, so it looks like they're yeah they gusted quite a bit there 22 they just had a gust of 22 miles an hour there um, you can see again this is where the shower hit you see how that wind the temperature just dropped like that it was really interesting, that shower that came on through. We just had a lot of these instability showers throughout the day, which is really interesting. I, I thought there would have been more rain in that shower, though. I really, really thought there would have been more rain in that. Um, anyway, um, interesting day, for sure. Uh, let's look at the power outage map and see. We do have some power outages. Pennsylvania has 36,595. New York has 13,122. Uh, from the wind. New Jersey has 5,475, mostly in the western part of the state, Huntington and Warren. Um, and uh, New York has 13,122. Most of these are on, on, uh, on the upstate counties like Chino Chinoga, 
Um, and also Ulster and Sullivan also has some outages too. Not too many on Long Island. Uh, I'm not even going to look at the outage map for Long Island. You can see three, uh, 301 in Suffolk County. Um, but yeah, these winds are going to cause isolated power outages for sure. Um, so looking at, let's look at a few more observations here before I get to the forecast. You can see mostly cloudy skies throughout the day. Listen to that wind. Wow. Mostly cloudy. Ugh, my allergies. Just give me a minute. I got to get a glass of water. It's just like a terrible post-nasal drip I get. It just goes like down there. It just causes such a tickle you can't even talk. Some the allergies, um, which are going to be bad because, yeah, we didn't really have a whole lot of rain, and I'm already seeing like all the pollen on the ground. Wow, listen to that wind. I don't know if you can hear it. Oh, man. Sorry. <laughs> Apologize for the allergies. That's what happens when you forget to take your clarin out, I guess. <laughs> and I do have an air purifier, but it's kind of a moot point because I have to have the windows open. Otherwise, it would be hot in here. I'm not putting on the air conditioner because they have nice air out there. It's just got pollen in it. That's all. Uh, so let's take a look and see what we got with the... <laughs> Uh, and you can see what we got here on the map here. It's looking at the map here on the GFS is that intense low, high pressure building. And sandwiched in between the two are these strong winds. Look at all those tight isobars that we're dealing with. So as we move this along into tomorrow, you'll see it starts improving. Isobars aren't quite as tight, but still tight enough that there's a breeze. That high quickly moves offshore Sunday. We start getting that return flow. We might even see a slight chance of a shower late tomorrow night with this warm front. Uh, and then um, the high kind of becomes an, an, a, a uh, southeast ridge, and we get the warmer, humid air. And we're going to be dealing with some unsettled weather after that with stall front syndrome. Uh, it looks like for a little bit, uh, at least uh, for part of the weekend. And we'll have to watch to see this. It's forming, it's developing this strong uh, coastal low, perhaps. This is May now. We're not supposed to see like strong coastal lows like this in May, because uh, today is the last day of April, as you know. And this is quite a strong system. Almost, it's like a hurricane. I mean, uh, look at that. That would be Saturday. Uh, quite a strong system there. Uh, pull this a little closer. That is, I mean, this is uh, over a week away, but still very intense. Uh, I'm just curious to see what the wind would be with this around this thing. Look at that. Uh, so some really strong winds. Uh, that, that current track uh, would take it like way, but the Cape could see sustained winds, 50, 40 to 50 miles an hour gusts over hurricane force in May. Uh, obviously, <laughs> this is a week away, and a lot can change, and a lot will change, but it's still quite impressive to say the least. Um, uh, so let me pull this back out again and. Let's see if this shows up on any of the other models. And it, you could see uh, it's as far out as this one goes. This is the ICON model. It's the only other model we could use would be the Canadian. And we'd have to see if this even shows up on the Canadian. And it does as well. But it shows up in a weaker form. And that's this is all because when we go back to the GFS, we go to the upper air pattern, you'll see what we have happen here. So uh, you see... This is that deep trough that we're going through right now. Uh, so we, uh, you know, that's what's bringing us the unsettled. This, this, is, the air aloft is quite chilly, uh, and that's why you have this instability going on. We see that moderate tomorrow, uh, and then you can see we got this very flat ridge uh, that will be with us for the first part of next week, and then another trough digs down, and this will provide the energy for that Saturday system. Uh, as we head into May. And then after that, another trough. So, uh, again, we have uh, an active pattern uh, that we're dealing with here. Uh, we can see if the how the European handles things as we head into the... And it's pretty much, pretty much looks the same. Uh, and, but that trough looks a lot broader on the European uh, than it does on the GFS for uh, the first full weekend of, well, actually, this is the first full weekend of I mean, the second full first weekend, uh, the second weekend of May. Uh, so let me go back to GFS here and uh, get, a, get a little closer into our area here. And, uh, and you'll see what I mean when we look at the, uh, 
want to look at a couple of other things here. Go to windy.com, and we're going to look at these temperatures and show you the lapse rates and what I'm talking about here. In fact, let me uh, go to this. I should just go to today, and we'll go to the temperatures. Listen to that. Can you hear that? That's the wind. Uh, so you can go to the temperatures here, and this will actually show. This is requesting a sounding. So you can see how the temperatures drop. All right, this is the sounding on the GFS. Uh, this is your temperature. Look at how fast this drops. And see where they meet right here? That's why we're seeing the instability cloudiness. All right, so this is why we're seeing that right now. Uh, there's a steep drop in temperatures uh, with height. It's a highly unstable air mass. Uh, see, that's why you're seeing all this low-top convection. Uh, so as we go into tonight, the temperatures drop. We drop. It gets gets cooler. Uh, some more cooler rail builds in. Uh, temperatures will probably be by morning around 40 degrees. And for tomorrow, we should warm up into the low 60s. Um, and then as we get, and it won't be quite as cool tomorrow night. You see that. That means cloud cover will keep the temperatures up. Winds go southwesterly. And we are much warmer on Sunday. Uh, probably sea breeze on Long Island keeps things in the 70s, but probably going to make another run at 80 in New Jersey probably uh, for Sunday. And then as we head into next week, you will see Monday is warm, sort of warm. You can see we're on the, uh, the cusp of uh, we're, we're, we're on a stall frontal boundary. So you can see you can sort of see where the stall frontal boundary is Tuesday. Here's Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday kind of comes back at us. Uh, here's Thursday, Friday. And you can see there's that storm for next week, Saturday. And then you can see behind these storms, it could get quite cool. Uh, but then it warms up afterwards. But not really any significant heat right now. Not even going to go beyond that. Um, but you can see, especially Tuesday, you can clearly see where you got your warm front uh, and where you got your cooler air uh, over the northeast here. So you clearly see where that warm front is. We can draw it out for you. Here's your warm front right here. All right, so it's going to be stuck over us, and that's going to be a focal point for precipitation, keeping us unsettled um, as we get into next week. So uh, let's go look at our um, sky conditions. We'll start with the GFS first. So tomorrow we should see less clouds. Maybe some clouds to start in the morning, but then mostly clear by probably later in the morning. And then we'll have tons more clouds for Sunday. And then we're going to be dealing with lots of clouds. Again, stall front syndrome, so you know the deal. Lots of clouds. Maybe we can clear it out for a little bit on Thursday, maybe. And then more clouds again. Then we would have to wait for that next system to pull away and maybe clear us out for next weekend. But it'll obviously get out there and enjoy tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be a mostly sunny day. And you better get out there and enjoy it because, again... It won't really be. It's going to be another period of junked up weather after that. So here's the RGM model. So you can see here's the RGM model. It keeps us mostly clear. And maybe, like I said, some more clouds a little later on, like late, way later, like 5 o'clock. I think it'll be mostly sunny. And then Sunday, we're going to have a lot more clouds around, as you can see. And then Monday, a lot more clouds as well. Uh, let's go look at the NAM. Here's the NAM model again. And you can see that wave of clouds. We're going to look at the HRRR and then show you how it might generate some more showers. But then mostly sunny tomorrow. So enjoy that because after that, like I said, here come the clouds for Sunday into Monday. So let me go to the HRRR here. And this is the 23Z HRRR, which will be good enough for us to use. You can see that little wave there. It could bring in some light rain, mainly to Suffolk County, like around, between midnight and 4 a.m. or something like that. And then it moves on out. Uh, but you can still see the isobars being kind of tight, so it'll still be kind of breezy tomorrow. Uh, so let's go look at this on windy.com, so I'll show you what I mean. So, so here's what it looks like tomorrow. You can see there's your temperatures, but let's go look at the wind and the wind gusts. So around this is uh, in the afternoon, you'll see you've got those wind gusts. Still, you still see some wind gusts up to 30 miles an hour. It, we won't need the wind advisory or a high wind warning anymore, uh, but there'll still be enough of a breeze out there uh, for tomorrow. And you can see winds of west, maybe a sea breeze in the later, maybe a sea breeze. Um, I, I don't think so. It'll be a pretty strong westerly wind, and 
We don't, but you'll see how the winds kind of change direction as you head towards Sunday, and that's what's going to bring in the warmer air. Uh, and that will be warmer, more humid air as well. So I'll go back to the triple R so you can get a chance to see uh, see how those dew points rise. So we have low dew points tomorrow. This is the H triple R. You see northwest winds. You can see how they kind of back a little bit and become a little more west to southwest later on. So there might be a sea breeze. And then the winds go southwest uh, for Sunday. And then we have a strong, a fairly stiff southwesterly flow on Sunday. But this is indicating kind of a westerly component here on this. You can see how the dew points do come up. It starts off west, southwest, and then it becomes more of a sea breeze later on. But that could help things get warm again. So this, the HFR is thinking Sunday could be quite a warm day, uh, well into the 70s. Uh, but I still think there'll be a sea breeze for Long Island. But Jersey, you'll probably go into the 80s again. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, that's what it is when you're in New Jersey. Um, so, yeah, I know, I know. I think that's going to wrap it up. So we've, we've covered a lot in this weather update, a lot to talk about. And like I said, we have, I have a video of all the amazing skies that we had to look for. Oh, listen to that wind. If you can hear that, it's my blinds going back and forth from the wind. Uh, so that's how, and, and that's just, and I face an alley. So imagine how windy it is out there. If you're not facing an alley, you're really hearing that wind. Um, I'm just going to go to the PSCG Long Island outage map and, and look and see if they have any additional power outages. We only have 131 outages, which isn't too bad. Uh, but again, with this wind, hey, there are going to be some scattered power outages. Uh, let's hope there aren't any issues on the railroad. Oh, I can check and see if there are any issues on the railroad. No, no. But the only issue that we have, of course, is planned for this weekend. You know the deal with that. That's a whole other subject. So... I think that's going to wrap it up. So thank you for watching. Get out there and again, enjoy it because uh, you will see. We'll look at tomorrow here. Clear skies more or less all day. So get out there and enjoy that sunshine. Though it looks like this model seems to want to build in some cloudiness toward the afternoon. This would be the European model. Other than that, it should be a nice sunny day. So get out there and enjoy the sunshine uh, and the nice breeze because it's going to be a junked up week. Uh, first full week of May is going to start off on a junky note. So. Uh, but it, the first day will start off absolutely nice. So enjoy that first day because after that, it's going to be junky for a while. That's going to be it. Listen to that wind. <laughs> Very windy tonight. And like I said, I'm going to have to be aware of that wind right through this mor right through the morning, probably 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, this wind, uh, these strong winds throughout the night. So wind gusts 40 to 50 miles an hour, still possible. Uh, that's going to be it for this weather update. Take care and thanks for watching.